So, um, welcome again um, to our two days webinar, Electronic Lab Notebooks, presented by myself and Jakob Harden. Um, this webinar is a part of an event series from Fair Data Austria called uh, Research Data Management in Austria. And in this uh, webinar series, we uh, deal with uh, different issues of uh, research data management. And this one is uh, dealing with um, electronic lab notebooks. So the content of our two days webinar is um, about a short introduction about the topic. Then uh, we will tell you something about the pros and cons of electronic net lab notebook, and also a short presentation about um, lab NDB. Then I uh, will present you the open source solution eLab FTW, and at the end, we will have also an explicit Q&A session. So, um, today with me is Jakob Harden, a researcher from uh, TO Graz, and also he is um, the project manager of the in-house uh, electronic labbook solution Lab NDW. And myself, Alexander Gruber, who is data steward at TO Graz, and will present you eLab FTW. So, um, so, about our short introduction, um, so what are, is the main purpose of electronic lab notebooks? Um, they are designed to replace our traditional paper laboratory notebooks and to have the possibility to, to um, communicate and also uh, collaborate with our, other researchers, support people and also administrative staff. Um, there are different kinds of uh, ELNs available. Um, some of them are specific for, uh, for a specific discipline, but there are also others who are cross-disciplinary. Then, as I said before, um, the main purpose is organization, but of course, as in a traditional lab notebook, also taking notes, and of course, uh, data storage, uh, sometimes to a limited amount of data or, or just to have uh, your whole data in this lab. And um, also there are open source solutions available like ELAB FTW, but there are also, uh, of course, there are commercial solutions. So, um, at this point, I would like to hand over to Jakob, who will explain you why we have this need for electronic lab notebooks. Yeah. Good morning. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> First of all, I wanted to yeah show what kind of, of, of data is coming up in, a, in laboratory processes. I tried to group it together a little bit just to have an, an yeah brief overview of what is what data is available in a lab. First of all, we have different data sources on the left top side. We have data from devices, we have protocols, we have Q QM documents, we have data from, from materials, from the stuff, from samples, for out of uh, laboratory facilities. Then we also do data processing. This can be done manually or by software or by the devices itself. Um, yeah, we also need to store the data somewhere whether on the file server or in a database or it's paper-based in a traditional way. But we also have to consider different <coughs> uh, data formats. We have uh, digital data, we have analog data, we have different file formats. And yeah, at the end, we want to use the data in, in, by some means. And yeah, for statistics, for reports, for analysis. Uh, what is the frequency, how the data is used, how it is available, what are the rights, this regards to, to intellectual property rights, and so on. Yeah, all of those types of data are, and, 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 and how they're handled are interconnected at the end. <clears throat> and this all of on all of them are let, at the end before you start to manage your data objects of consideration so please go to the next to the next slide <clears throat> yeah when we talk about data management in the laboratory we have to con con this is mainly let's say a cycle we create data by some means we process data we store the data somewhere and we reuse the data and this can and, and this can go in cycles 
sometimes you let's say you process data and you create by this pro data processing new data that needs to be stored somewhere that can be used some uh, uh, again and yeah but and, and sometimes you need to destroy data considering let's say the DSGVO. okay uh what what we stick on the theocrats to is uh that we want to use fair data what does fair mean that your data should be findable it should be accessible it should be interoperable and it should be reusable these are yeah the main main things you have to consider when when dealing with laboratory data okay we go to the next slide yeah pros and cons of of, of, of electric electronic laboratory notebooks i tried to yeah let's say this I'll try to set up a, a little this uh, this decision grid there are two main things to to consider if you want to implement a new uh, laboratory notebook in your company or on a new university or your institution one thing is the, the flexibility of the solution at the end and the other is the effort you have to put in to set up this solution so there are different things that can be done on the left bottom side you see you can use an existing solution like elab ftw or anything that's already available whether open source or um or commercial then you can on the left top side you see you can uh, hire a company that that develops some solution for you like this me or something like other, other software development company that's i call this external development it has yeah let's say best fits to your needs you need less knowledge to 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 to, to create the solution because the company you hire does it for you but you depend on the developer and you depend on the contract you have with, with, with the development company at the end. You can also adopt an existing solution. This is mainly for open source software. Normally you're not allowed to adopt a commercial solution. This then depends on the community that is developing that, that solution. And you, let's say, depend on, on, on updates and you need at least some yeah good 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 bunch of 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 knowledge to do that and yeah you really have to 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 to, to go deep into that solution if you want to extend something that already exists or on the right top side you can go to your own development this of course has done the best fit to your needs the knowledge is all yours because you need all the knowledge to do that. You have less dependencies and of course, the marketing of the solution is possible then at the end. So, uh, yeah, but one thing, uh, so, sorry, one slide back. One thing you always have to consider is that you have to integrate the tool in your data management processes. So it doesn't matter what solution you use, if you hire a company or do your own development or adopt the existing solution, you always have to implement this into your processes. You have to train your personnel and you have to maintain that solution at the end. Okay, now we go to the next slide. I tried to yeah compare, let's say the main features such such a, a laboratory notebook should have uh, for three different solutions. I did it for Elab FW, for Senaite, that is also a well-known uh, laboratory notebook, and our own development lab NDB, which means laboratory notebook and database. In general, we can see uh, that 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 all of this of the of the three solutions share almost the same features but not at the same level of detail of course elab ftw and senaite mainly come from that from the chemistry section of laboratories but is not restricted 
just to chemistry, but it's, uh, it's, its origin is, is, is from chemistry labs at the end. Okay. okay, we go to the next slide. So what do you really have to consider before starting an, an, an electronic laboratory notebook in your company or your institution is to think about what do I really need to manage, what do I want to manage, and what results do I expect from that solution at the end. Maybe you have, let's say, quality management system, then you have to maintain all your, your quality management documents. You have all to manage all the documentation this, that, that's going along with, with that quality management system. Uh, or what do I want to manage? Do I want to manage all my projects as well? Or let's say a different billing or whatever. Yeah, and the, let's say, and at the end, the results, yeah. Well, what should be the outcome for me? Do, do, do I want to have printable documents? Do I want to have the data available in a database for further analysis or whatever? But uh, yeah, be aware, data management at the end is not just using software. So it's much more than just that. And an, an uh, electronic library notebook can just support this data management processes. It's not the data management process itself. Yeah, and the best solution is always that one that fits best to your needs. Okay, so we can go ahead. So I give you now a brief introduction on uh, Lab NDB, Laboratory Notebook and Tidal Database. Um, it's a pilot project of the uh, RDM Marketplace at TU Graz. What are the what are the requirements in our labs in our institute? Uh, we have a need for laboratory data management in general. This should be there for researchers and the laboratory stuff. Uh, what do we want to do to get out of this solution is that we want to have the data available for analysis and it should for the researchers support the publication process. So it's all about the having the data available and reusable from our laboratory processes. Yes, and this should be a general purpose tool because we have different kind of labs. We have chemistry labs, we have physical labs, we have, yeah, and other stuff. So it should be pretty much general and not restricted to a certain topic. So what were our first steps to uh, 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 to do that, first we assigned to the RDM Marketplace pilot project call and uh, got awarded. Um, then uh, we started a cooperation with another institute of the of TO Graz, which was uh, really beneficial for, to, to, to create that first prototype, to create that first solution we now have. And yeah, we started to develop the web application Lab NDB. Next slide, please. So what were the aims of this uh, pilot project? First of all, we want to gather laboratory test data from devices and or manually the tests. We need to store and manage the data. Uh, we had to handle materials, samples and processes. We want to export the data to files or yeah, mainly to files and, and, and to other uh, RDM solutions like Cybers. Uh, we have uh, wanted to have a modular structure and an open architecture to be able to extend that solution at the end to, to our needs and to the needs of other laboratories as well. So it needs to be pretty open, pretty generic at the end. And it should be, yeah, this should enable us for, 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 for let's say, that should, that it comes uh, to, to be a, a, a really versatile thing at the end. 
It also should be device and platform independent because we don't want to have any restriction to any operating system or any kind of, of device. Like we, we can work with the solution on normal desktop PC. We can work with the solution, uh, want to work with the solution on, on, on tablet computers or even the, the, a smartphone. And yeah, it should be based on open source tools to get rid of that nasty license fees <laughs> you have to pay otherwise and we of course we wanted to follow and be aligned to fair data principles so yeah <clears throat> so we have now that our, our prototype almost done or done uh, we can handle laboratory processes, we can manage materials and samples and laboratory facilities like devices and our rooms and areas and all that stuff that, 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 that is in our labs. We can also, as uh, supporting processes, manage projects to customers, suppliers with contact addresses, phone numbers and so on. Uh, we can export data to files and to servers and other RDM uh, util we use on this on, on our university. We have a web-based user interface and a web-based administrative interface. You can see both of them on the right-hand side. And we have a demo version to try out at the moment uh, only for the for for the employees on this university at the moment it's, it's restricted to, 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 to this university so now we can go on and i'm going to show you a little bit how this solution now looks like and how it works and therefore i will share my screen So I hope anybody can see now the dashboard of Lab NDB. Yep, looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so we have let's say the, the left top side the three main things. You go to come to the, this dashboard when you logged in. We can handle here let's say materials with the, uh, just some some and yeah each material is coming from a supplier or someone else so you can have, uh, upload here a delivery site how it is packaged number of packages and so on then it is stored in some place in our lab so you always should know where your materials are to find them again not to, we don't want to just to find the data but the material itself as well uh, yeah, you can upload additional documents, images, whatever you need. You can define additional properties and we want to have, uh, let's say, no, it's not filled out because it's prototype at the moment, but at the end, there should be a, a brief help for what you can do here. Yeah. The same things we, uh, we have yeah, also for uh, to manage our samples. We look at one sample. It also samples are stored somewhere. Uh, you have some documents coming along with your samples, images. You can create subsamples if you want to divide a sample into several pieces to make the, the different tests on subsamples. Uh, you have details about the origin of the sample, where it is coming from, uh, yeah, the source of the sample or if it's from a, from a, from a supplier or a customer or a, from a funder. Uh, and we also have some sample, a sample history. This is a list of all the tests that were performed on this sample, just to know what has happened to that sample. And one of the main or core features of it is test processes. So processes are related to projects, can be categorized, and yeah, it's always as meta information here, who started something and when it was started or done. If we look 
at this, uh, each process has a start, a defined start, each process has a defined end, and each process has a certain set of process activities. So these activities means these are the laboratory tests and you can here add on additional uh, tests that all go into this one process. And at the end, you can here fill out all your test data, define test devices, put in numbers of your numbers uh, you, you, you gather from measurements and so all of your data is stored in the database and available for further uh, analysis. For example, you can also pick notes along with your testing. For uh, you can add documents and images as well. Yeah. One of the nice features is also you to, that you can send messages to other persons in your lab. You can sign up for different groups, message groups and then filter uh, by, by, by different groups, create a new message, send it to a certain group, and also you can send just also personal messages. So no, there, are no, there are no, create a new message, send it, let's say to the, to the admin, And then you, the admin will see, now I'm logged in as admin, so I see it <laughs> as a received message. Uh, yeah, that's good idea to, to change, exchange information inside the lab. If someone is not there, and the next day he can see what has happened. And here should also go a relation to devices and samples and materials as well, that you know uh, what is this message related to. We also have... Uh, can manage our laboratory facilities like devices. Well, uh, on, the, on the on the bottom side, you can see if the, uh, you can book devices for tests. So everybody else knows in, in, in that range of time that device is not available. It's also a good idea to know when you can use a device or not. You can have a laboratory errors is something like the physics labs, the chemistry lab, concrete lab, that's the different areas of a, of a bigger lab laboratory. Each area has certain rooms you can manage here and sections. Let's say this is a workbench at the end. And you can also book this section so you know a workbench is, or section is occupied at the moment. Yeah. We also have file manager for all those uploaded files and you can directly view what file, uh, file was uploaded at the end. You can see you also have the, the metadata here the license, who, who uploaded it, and so on. So, yeah, we also have just at the moment as a prototype, some statistics. You can look what are most booked days or for certain devices, whatever. In this here, you can see just an example. It's going to be developed on and yeah. So far, this is the first, let's say, insight in the solution we created on the, on, on, for our institute and for other institutes on our university. And yeah, we are looking forward that this solution will, uh, yeah, will be used in a lot of different labs at the end. So I stop sharing and hand over to Alexander again. Okay, uh, thank you, Jakob, for um, the presentation of uh, LabNDB. 
I will share my screen again. Um, okay, so our next part is um, the open source solution Elab FDW, um, which is not an in-house solution like Lab NDP, but we um, use it here at Theo Graz. So it's a solution that is already as a, is already used at Theo Graz and hosted at our central computer facility. Um, as I said before, it's an open source solution. Um, and it's also, uh, you can also enter it by um, any web browser. Um, we use it at Theo Graz as, um, as in, in research and also in teaching, so for laboratory exercises. And uh, the main purpose of ELAP FTW is uh, taking notes, organization of um, uh, database items and also a limited um, a limited data storage is also available there. Of course, um, one of these uh, purposes is also the metadata documentation and the uh, management of the lab equipment. Um, yeah, so there are more or less three main parts in this um, in this uh, ELAP FTW. The first one is the experiment section, then the database section, and the team section. Uh, in the experiment se section, you can make new entries called new experiments. But um, of course, this ex this is just um, like a term just for every entry you have in this experiment part. And you can modify these entries with a graphical text editor. You can directly set the permissions. So who is uh, who is allowed to see your entries or who is uh, allowed to um, to edit them. Um, also, you have a, a status and a time damping feature. And if you uh, go down a little bit further on this side, we will see this later in the demo. Um, you can also directly attach um, files, which could be um, uh, WinWord files or uh, PowerPoint, but also uh, videos and audio recordings and photos and many more. Um, what is also uh, available, we have, you can also make uh, machine readable metadata via this uh, JSON editor. And you could directly uh, draw um, something in this, um, in this, uh, in this entry. And also because it's from, it originates from the, from the, uh, chem from the chemical area, uh, you have also a um, basic molecule drawer in this, in this uh, solution. So on the second part is the database section. Um, here you can um, define different kind of database items, as you can see here in blue and red task or equipment. But this is just a sample. You can uh, do it as you want. Um, this is defined by the admin of, of um, every team in this, in this solution. Um, yeah, and it's designed for uh, like different kind of instruments, for chemicals, but also for tasks. So not just for physical items, you can use it for other stuff as well, but also for data sets and media if you need it. Um, what is important here, um, also this, this uh, file, these um, items can be bookable and non-bookable, as we can, we will see in the next section, in the team section. So the last really important part of this solution is the team section. And in, in here you have information about all your fellow colleagues of your team. You can also send directly an email. And um, what you can do is also have this scheduler where you can book items that are bookable from the database section directly and have um, an organism. Um, Okay. Okay. There is some kind of audio issue. As I see here. Um, okay. I hope it won't rise again. Um, okay. Yeah. You can here manage all your um, your, your equipment and can see uh, when certain things are booked and when not, and can manage also your um, instruments and laboratory stuff here. Um, just a brief introduction into these, uh, into the permissions and also the different kinds of um, of statuses a user can have. Um, 
Um, we have the user section. This is more or less the, the common status of a new user in ELAP FTW. Then we have the admin. Um, the admins are um, more or less the managers of every team we created in our solution. And then there's also the sysadmin, but this is not really important here because it's just in the, the operators of the thing. And as you can see, you have uh, different kinds of features available depending on your status. You can also create groups in your teams. So you can uh, have so, so subgroups in the teams, which are also have their uh, own permission settings if there's a need for that. And users can also be part in multiple teams that are created in one ELAP solution. So, uh, for example, we create one team for one institute at our university. So we have several institutes, but we could have also several working groups who are um, who are who have their own teams. But of course, a member of this working group can also be part in another working group. So you can at one time be a member of several uh, teams. So um, there's also another solution to uh, access ELAP, um, not just via the browser, as you saw before, this is uh, this was the, uh, the browser view. You also can do it via APIs. So you, you can uh, write uh, small scripts. There are some, some of them also are already available uh, where you can access it via an API and just create new entries uh, in the experiments or database sections, but also in the team sections, in the scheduler. Um, you can export also this information um, and you can also create templates directly to a 3D, um, 3D uh, small Python scripts. So there are several um, possibilities and also there is um, a good API documentation already available by the creators of ELAP FTW. Okay, so I will give you now um, a short uh, demo of ELAP FTW and so um, this uh, demo is part of one of our in-house uh, workshops. Um, just for you, the, the, the background story for this workshop is that we have an institute contest and the idea of this institute contest to find out who has the best ice cream recipe. And this is, uh, this is based on a true story. Um, so the idea behind this workshop and also this background story is to uh, show the main functions of ELAP um, FTW with a common example that is cross-disciplinary because everyone knows what ice cream is and yeah, more or less knows how it, it is made. Uh, um, normally, I would first show it and also the, the participants. The workshop will work by themselves, but of course, in as part of this webinar, we'll just show it to you. Um, the idea is that we have um, a documentation about um, these ice cream recipes, and that um, all of these of the of your fellow colleagues can then um, see what um, has been done and have the possibility to share all of their experiments in that case and see how the booking options also for instruments like in our case we need some kind of um, kitchen equipment um, takes place and the overall goal is just to learn how to use it as a user so um, this is the starting page of ilp as uh, members of TO grads will uh, see it you can see here that um, members uh, if you're not already have an account you just can do it by clicking on this reg uh, register part which is just a short formula then you have to wait for um, your uh, sysadmin to activate your account or also your admin from your team um, but it's also possible that your admins create an account for you and send you the login credentials. So, as you prefer. Yeah, then you just log in. And um, normally, here would be um, the option to choose um, if you're in several teams, then you can choose which team you want to join right now. But of course, our um, test memory is in, in just one team. And this is um, the the uh, starting page when you join your team, you start with the experiment section and you can see here, um, there's already an, uh, an example for our, for our um, institute contest created by our admin of our team. Yeah, so you can see here what 
what this um, experiment or this entry in the experiment section could look like. Yeah, we have here um, several options to uh, duplicate and also to export our feature. We, uh, we can create tags to find it more easily. We have here the permission settings. We will, we will, uh, we will use this later. We have a uh, name for this file. Then we have all this information in our text editor, as I um, showed you before in the slides. Um, we have um, also steps available. Um, to just click on it as uh, to mark unmark it and we have also these linked items available which are part of the database and as you can see here also uh, some files are attached and also you can write comments as okay it was good but less sugar is recommended um, so we have now an example how our, our team admin wants that our um, our entries our recipes look like and if I go back to the listening, I can see that another colleague of mine also created an, an, an entry with French vanilla ice cream. So as you see, okay, yeah, he used this template. And what we want to do now is to the same. We just, we have decided which, um, which uh, experiment, which entry, uh, which flavor we want. And so we create a new entry and we can do this by this create button. This would uh, create a new blank uh, instrument, but um, our admin said we should use our template. So we have, we had we got a template that is called Institute Contest Template. So we click on this one. Okay. Now we have an issue, of course, because this is a webinar. Um, okay. There it is. Of course, there has been some kind of trouble. I don't know why. Uh, let me check that for a second. Something's wrong here. Okay, so, okay. Back again. So I can't figure out what the problem is, of course. This is uh, in, in the fluffy effect. Um, I don't know where the problem is, but this is how the experiment section or new entry looks like if it's a blank project. Uh, normally, we would have you now uh, uh, information about the uh, about how this um, about from from the template. So there is some pre-filled uh, information here, but um, we decided to have um, to uh, use a strawberry ice cream. So first of all, we need a title for our um, our for our new entry. And I will hit cheat here because I have um, already some information in a Word file. Um, then we need text to do it. It is much more easier to find our, our entries. I will just use eyes as a tag and contest. I think that's enough. Then we will set the status of our experiment, which is running. Right now it's not a success, but, it, but now it's running. These status are um, completely um, definable are defined by the admins of our team and we start on today but i could also start yesterday if i want but or in the future so um then we have some information about our um about our new um um so i have to remember how the template looks like but i guess it was something starting with the with the name of our new entry that says our name and it's strawberry ice cream. Um, then we want um, some information about yeah, how long does it take to do this? So we have I will copy paste this here just about the duration. This is a little bit too small. Mm, adding to operation time. Mm, big enough. Make it twelve. Okay, then we want to know which ingredients are important for this one. Import this one, 
this is all now completely imported by um, just one um, word file. So we can see the um, okay, and of course we need some informations how it was prepared. Also here, I will copy paste this inside. Oh, we need it. So. Okay, make it a little bit bigger again. Preparation, so good enough. So you can see that some of the settings you already made in another file. Maybe you have already a documentation or somewhere in, in, in another file, like a Word document or an editor, will be partly already taken to this ELAB FTW file, which comes pretty handy. Doesn't work in every situation, but um, most for most of uh, most of our students here. You can also um, use it if you want to have a, a table here or other stuff. Okay, so that's nice. Then that is a good a good um, information about what has to be done to create our new a new um, ice cream flavor. Um, but we also like to have steps, something we can check and uncheck if necessary. And for that, um, we will just add a few steps that we know are necessary to um, go through this preparation list, which is now, which could be the first one is that we want to um, combine all our ingredients. Enter this one, then we would um, also need uh, with ice cream in a bowl of ice. Then we also want to add strawberries. As another step, we have to cook the mixture. Okay, this is not the, the best order. I guess I have to do this mixture part um, after the combine of the ingredients. And at the end, we have to freeze it because it's ice cream. So, okay. So now we have also the steps. Um, we would like also to attach a file that our fellow colleagues will see how it should look like. I mean, every one of us knows how a strawberry will look like, but just do it. So um, we have a photo here. We just added, now it's available, and there's an attached file here. Okay, then we also need some items for that. So in, as you can imagine, some lab stuff, but in our case, it's kitchen stuff. and right now first what we want to do is to save our file okay now it is saved and i will check what items are available for me okay i can see here some kind of things available and in my case i know i need this ice cream maker which is a kitchen item a bowl which is a kitchen accessoire item and the pot is also a kitchen accessoire so i go back here to the database um check i need a kitchen item say it's an ice cream uh there is it already just check it now it's part of our experiment then we need an accessoire which was the bowl check and what we want also the pot oh, the hand, hand blender we want the hand blender Hand blender. Okay. So, okay. Now our items are linked, but we will also need a mixer. Hmm. But there is no item in our database. Hmm. What a pity. But of course, we can get, we can just create a new one because we are allowed to do this. So we found a mixer. There are uh, these are different kind of um, database items available. So we have the kitchen items, accessoire, task, and equipment. And we know that it's an item, a kitchen item. So we just grab this one and then add this um, item here. I give, we'll just give it a an, an title, but of course you can see it. Pre, it's really similar to the experiment part. So if I would have more time, I would add information, more information here, maybe a photo or also information where you will find our mixer. So I just save it here. Something. 
So it's safe. You can see now the mixer is available here. I go back to our experiment and want to add our mixer. Ah, here it is. Okay. So now everything is ready here, but I want to um, also uh, book our items, of course, in the scheduler, because I have to be sure that it's available at the time I need it. So um, I go back to the database. Mm, let's start with our hand blender. So we click on this and I will, I want to book this item. So I have in a small item for booking it. And I can see, uh -huh, another user already booked this one. Mm, okay, then I will use it off, right after him. So just add it here and say for our strawberry ice cream. Okay, so that's it. Then we go back. We also want the ice cream maker. Uh huh. Ah, there's also a, a photo available, so I will see how this ice cream maker looks like. So we're a pretty fancy institute because we have an ice cream maker. So again, we want to book this, which has already been taken. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I will do this after lunch. Okay. Okay, that's it. And I also need our um, the mixer um, here and want to add it too. And I guess I need this one. Oh, nobody booked this one. Of course, I created a database item before and um, I will use it from three to five. Yeah. Okay, so let's check all of the available items. So you can see here, um, you can um, search for different items. So in our case, just a mixer. But if you want to see all bookable items, then you, then you will see what is booked um, at a certain day. You can see um, our colleague, colleague four has uh, booked the bowl and other stuff. And after this one, we have uh, also booked our stuff. Okay, so um, now everything is, is, is ready, but of course we want to set our permission settings because I'm a little bit suspicious since this is a contest that maybe they will change my recipe and then it won't be as good as was intention. So I will um, manage my permissions. Because it would be nice to change the visibility to just me the admin um, enforced our reading permissions to the team. So we want this transparent. He wants that everyone can see this. Okay. Then I will change the right permissions only to myself. And that is okay. Because he just enforced uh, from the admin page that the visibility has to be on the Okay. So now we can save this again. We can go back to the listening and I can see here that Okay, just ignore this template stuff. Something went wrong here. Um, that we can see here our uh, French vanilla ice cream from our catalog, and this is mine. And if I want to, um, I, of course, you saw before, I can check his items because Teen Admin said we it has to be available for all of us. I cannot, I cannot change anything here, but of course, I can check what has been done here. Um, all I can do is I can duplicate it. So I can use a, uh, a copy of this one and um, try to make it better or to move on with his experiment. But also I can export this one. I can get an, a PDF of the information who is, who is here, uh, which is here. And I can make a, a zip file. So, which means I get all of the information here. This one has a PDF and, the, and, and this one and the um, files attached also in one zipped file. Okay. Um, yeah, this is it more or less. These are the, the basic features of, um, of our ELAB FDW. So I will go back to the, uh, presentation.
and we already uh, we already reached the, the Q and A sections. So, are there any any questions uh, regarding um, in general um, lab and or lab as a laboratory notebooks in general? You can just unmute yourself and ask us. Hi, can I? Can you sure. hear me? Go on. <laughs> yeah, we so, can hear you. Okay, thank you for the yeah for the gift of the was really interesting. I also think the documentation and there is a LDAP integration as well, so it's really okay. interesting yes, for our institution. Can you hear me? Maybe now it's better. Um, so we can't we can't hear right now. Lost the audio connection, I guess. Okay. Go on. Okay. Is there is there another question? Okay. Um Juliane. Just unmute yourself. Okay. Um, so I have a question about um, changing properties of samples or of items in bulk, like um, a certain number of, of items uh, is uh, has been quality checked um, and I want to, uh, I don't want to put in that information for 20 uh, lab items by hand, but I want to change that information on bulk. Is that possible? Um, I will answer this question just for um, uh, ELAP and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go, move, go on. Um, yes, it's possible, but um, there is this API feature pretty handy. Um, if you do it in the browser, you would have to do it by hand for the items. If you use the API feature, yeah, you can um, just um, um, yeah, you can just say which items do you want to change, and then they will be changed all at once. So it depends. Um, yeah, that's the way you can do it in Elab and Jakob. Yeah, <clears throat> we have been thinking about this for LabMDB as well. Uh, at, the, at the end, in the back end, the database, so you can change uh, um, any is... number of, of, of items and in one go. But this feature is at the moment not power. implemented, but you're already thinking um, about bulk operations yeah. for and each and please, everything in our please database. Stop. Because please unmute impossible. yourself. But please we don't uh, have it ready on, on the user interface at the moment. Um, just one second. Uh, yeah, there is a sub discussion going on. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. But I cannot see who is not unmuted. Sorry for the interruption. I will check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one okay. thing regarding lab in DB, uh, it, it will use a Postgres database in behind and uh, there is no need to access the database directly via, via our web front end. Yeah, you can also directly access the database as well. This is, let's say, uh, uh, important for, for, for analysis at the end, so you can directly access the database in behind. Yeah. Uh, no, no need to click around, let's say, and, and, and then we can do any operation you want to do if you know SQL. So, or, or use any yeah. other solution as well that accesses the same database. That's perfectly possible, but let's say we, we're um, at the moment as prototyping, so we don't have any feature that that, that would be a good idea. Uh, Sinaite has this bulk operation thing in, included already, but we, uh, we 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 don't want to want to use Sinaite because it's really mainly related to, to chemistry labs, and that doesn't fit to our needs or just to one part of our needs and that, that's not enough. So, yeah, 
we also it, it's 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 on <laughs> it's it's on the run <laughs> to, to to go to that things and then in the next year we will uh uh go to to let's say closer to production mode with our solution and then this will be a topic of course thank you very much well, can you hear me now yeah we can yes. hear you okay. so i always have problem with all this this meeting Okay, thank you. It was really interesting. I'm from DLR in Germany. And I was looking at the implementation. We have also LDAP integration. It's really interesting to integrate with the current users. The other thing I was thinking, can you, if we already have a, a database of our, all our symbols and all this stuff, can you somehow integrate with Xena uh, sources? So, like when you were showing, completing the, the experiment, you want to put ingredients that come in from existing sources. Can I integrate somehow with a uh, third party service? So database we already have, or I should migrate everything there to have at least a reference. So it's just one to link with different sources. Mm -hmm. um, so for ELAP, um, a, okay, a, a direct link, a direct integration is not possible. What you can do is you can, if you have already some items available in, um, in some form, you can import them. And another uh, solution is, um, but this doesn't matter if it's a database item or an experiment item, you can um, write, you can have scripts that directly write information into your lab book, notebook. So we have one solution here where this is done, where when we start a new experiment, then you ultimately create a new entry with the information from the experiment. But what you cannot do is to have an integration of an external, a direct integration of an external database. Mm -hmm. I guess okay. it's a little bit different in lab NDP. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> of course, yeah, what, what we also plan to do is, uh, let's say, to do lookups to, 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 to uh, other databases on this university because we have all uh, also the, the, those laboratory management with uh, all devices and so on. And therefore we want to update from the inventory database from the OGRADS directly to our solution so that any device that is registered in the inventory database of the OGRADS uh, can be directly imported or updated uh, in our database. Uh, all of those items that, that are related to our institute, for example that's already planned. Okay. So in, in our case, we, we, we wrote all the code on our own so we can do anything we want. So this is maximum yeah. of flexibility and we right. can integrate any other database as well. Okay, but it makes, it needs more effort at the end. So of course, of course, yes. Yeah, and, 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 and this integration is also, uh, let's say, is, 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 is really related to your organization, to your institution. We can do the inventory data uh, update from the inventory database of the OGADS, but in a different company, company, maybe they don't have a database for that, or it looks completely different. So right. this is really related to the use to the use case then at the mm -hmm. end. And ELAB FTW is not really related to a certain company or certain database or whatever. So it's more a generic tool. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Are there any further questions? Okay, I see no hands up. Maybe everything is clear at that point. <laughs> um, okay. uh, sorry, I have one question. Okay. And it just crossed my mind. Um, mm -hmm. but because I stepped in a bit later, unfortunately, but I, I would like to know. Um, so I just looked up uh, the publications that you have, and there are a few and which one would you recommend for us to read if we want to get deeper into understanding um, ELAB uh, FTW? So which, which of the publications you have already out there um, would you recommend us? 
Um, for ELAB, you could, um, also the, 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 one of the best sources of course is the, um, the, the project page of ELAB FDW, which is, um, okay, just let me look that up. It's, um, I will post this one in the chat. Um, so this one is the, the, the starting page. Uh, Maybe it's just easier. I will also share my screen for that one. Um, so this is the, the starting page of the project, and here you also can you can hear you can download it here. You have also this uh, the, the live demo here. If you want to um, try it out, if you go there, you have already an an web version of it running, and you can just try it. Um, this is one possible way to get uh, in touch with it, but you have here the documentation. Um, and if you just click on this, um, if you want to install it yourself, add the documentation, you will get to this uh, wiki page where you can find a lot of information about the installation and also the usage. So you have short guides for the for the user, for the admin or the sysadmin. Um, and you have also documentation about how to back up and update this stuff. Um, you can also find additional information about this API feature, which is pretty important, I think. So um, you will get a short introduction, but as I said, there is also a um, more specific API documentation, which you can find here. So my recommendation is uh, just go to the um, to the main page of the project yeah then uh, go to the documentation part and from there on you will find the uh, additional information that is let's say more or less um, more as important if you want to use it of course you can also find the uh, project on github um, I can link all of this information um at the at, so on in the mail i will send you after this webinar thank you and uh, one more question so uh, when i w went to google scholar i searched about elab uh, ftw i found one um, publication from 2021 with the title um, elab ftw as an open science tool to improve the quality and translation of preclinical research so is this uh, something where we will get uh, additional information from, or you would still stick with the documentation from your homepage? Or is there something interesting about it that we, like as a researcher, could could have a look at? Um, to be honest, I don't know this publication. I have to check it by myself first. <laughs> but um, to get started. Um, I think the the official documentation is enough. If you want to new, um, if you want to know more about, um, let's say, a use case in this in this part, I would recommend to read this because I think you will um, find a lot of information about this. Um, there's there's also another document, but I have to look that up first. Um, maybe I have I will find it and will also link it in the in the mail. Uh, where there is um, where they compare different kind of solutions, different kind of electronic lab notebooks. Also, in as a, in regard of um, um, I, I guess it was a medical background. I have to check it first, but I will if I find it, I will uh, link it in the mail too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other? Pop-up questions. If not, um, I would just share my screen one last time. And oh, sorry. I want I was asked to show you um, to save the date if it's um, interesting for you our next webinar the third one in this uh, summer term is about an exploration of persistent unit identifiers use value in future 
at 27th of April from 10 to 12. So if you're interested in that, just register for this one too, if you haven't already. And um, yeah, if you want further information, which won't be in, the, in our mail, or you just want to get contact with us, um, please uh, use this um, email. Of course, you can just answer me um, or just contact me and Jakob if you want by um, the mail you will get at the end of this webinar. I also want to thank you for joining our webinar. I hope it was interesting for you. And I hope we will see you again in one of the upcoming webinars. So thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much all.